Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. We are back yet again, everybody. We're back with another fragrance review today. And if you guys know this fragrance, I'm sure you guys have heard about this. I mean, all throughout, all week, guys. I mean, I'm sure a lot of y'all are pretty excited to hear what I have to say regarding this fragrance. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Guys, we are almost there to 15,000 subscribers. I cannot believe we gained 500 subscribers in just two weeks. And so that really makes me excited, guys. And even though I had worked the night shift, guys, I mean, I'm definitely excited to get you guys this review so again please do not forget to like and subscribe if you like this review and the fragrance that we will be talking about today is none other than tomavici's demigod 21 demigod 21 man i mean this is the talk of the town guys now this all started me finding out about this fragrance all started with Travis Gearhart. Yes, Travis Gearhart, my buddy. He is my de facto, uh, uh, maybe unofficial eyes and ears on the streets, guys, when it comes to Fragcom. Because quite honestly, I don't have the time for this kind of drama, to be honest. I'm just too busy being a nurse and being a dad and running my other businesses to be really getting into all of this, right? So Travis was the one that hit me up and he basically said, bro, you gotta review this thing because this is what your channel is really about. So I asked Travis, I was just like, you know, so what's going on with this like Tomavici? Like I had never heard of this perfume right here. And he said that the owner of Tomavici, like he knows the owner of Tomavici. And he actually said that, you know, I like the perfume. Bottom line, I like it. Travis likes it. He really loves the perfume. And the thing is, you know, this being an independent, uh, you know, creator's perfume, uh, much like, I guess, Zaharoff in his early days, uh, any type of thing like this, like, you know, there's these little, like, mob, there's this little mob in Fragcom, these cancel mobs, that will try to attack you, really, on your first, like, you know, outing. Once you release, like, a product, or like a video, these guys are like on auto program to basically hate on you. And how do I know that? Because I got the same treatment when I started this channel right here. It is very, very shocking. It is very, very shocking for people like me, people like Luau who owns this Tomavici because we just create and you know, just because we're like succeeding in our thing, these guys just do not want us to succeed they do not want him to succeed or when my channel started they didn't want me to succeed and they usually do this in the beginning ironically the opposite actually happens so i remember like the biggest troll in the fragcom i don't know where he is right now but he said that i would never make it past 3,000 subscribers and here we are five times over almost so um, they said the same thing about Zaharoff and Zaharoff is in my opinion succeeding and flourishing. So with Tomavici guys, the more you guys hate this product and the more you guys talk about it, trust me guys, the more this fragrance or this company will succeed. That is how it goes. I mean, you guys should already know by this point. This is a community of fragrance lovers. I mean, we come here to just enjoy fragrances, but to go as far as really trashing a brand, a company before it even launches really, I think is pretty low. Honestly, we're just here to enjoy our hobby right here. So that's really the background of that. This fragrance right here, this is the reason why there are no hype videos because there's a lot of hate, there's a lot of hype. Either way, I don't give a damn. I'm gonna review this fragrance for what it is. Now let's get into the fragrance guys. Let's spray this thing right now. Mm. Okay, guys, now let's talk about Demigod 21, guys, okay? Don't ask me what the 21 is for. I don't really know. I mean, I briefly talked to the owner, Luau, which you guys, some of you guys are hating on, and he offered to send me the bottle. I said, don't send me the bottle, just give me the samples. And so I got the samples right here. I don't know much about it, but Demigod, obviously, this is a pretty masculine 
like term a demigod so basically it's like somebody that is powerful right somebody that has a lot of presence a lot of uh, dominance uh, being a demigod okay that's at least what I know and I'm going to read off the card right here this is the only description I really know I didn't look into the website or anything like that a capturing yet mysterious scent that creates an alluring aura around you okay so it's a capturing uh, maybe a captivating mysterious scent basically that creates an alluring aura around you that's the only thing I know about this thing okay I didn't ask about anything the company the guy what he did in the past I didn't I didn't look into that this fragrance opens with the notes of cardamom white sage as well as mint guys okay cardamom you guys know sage you guys know mint you guys know but of course what's the proportion here guys this one starts off with a good amount of spicy cardamom as well as a really aromatic white sage okay these are the two to me the big components of this opening which is of course mostly standard uh, when it comes to you know gent scent fragrances right so a lot of y'all like cardamom in your fragrances a lot of y'all like sage in your fragrances now the mint right here has a cooling effect I think that that's a tertiary part of this trio right here. So again, cardamom spice, very masculine, and you have white sage, the aromatic sage, which is, gosh, in a lot of aromatic fragrances, very, very familiar to a lot of y'all, and then the cooling side of the mint. Now, this opening to me here is pretty gent scent. It's a gentlemanly scent, and it will invoke a lot of really good feelings because these are you know the usual suspects of gent scent fragrances cardamom and sage but the mint is also nice because it adds a nice dynamic of uh it's like a cooling uh fresh dynamic that gets added to this cardamom sage mix and i think it's very likable guys and it's really high on the usability factor now the thing about this opening guys which is very masculine very gentlemanly is that it lasts very long matter of fact it's pretty exemplary when it comes to that because most openings really last like what 30 minutes to an hour max but this part right here with a combination of these three notes they do last up to three hours three hours guys okay which is again on the usability end if you guys liked this spicy aromatic intro with that cooling mint guys i mean you're gonna get three hours of that you're not gonna get you know an intro that's gonna fade out really really quickly so that is one positive thing because again these are your usual suspects of masculine gent scent perfumery now the mid happens in hour four okay on hour four okay this is when the iris starts picking up and it is a nice transition that's the thing about this fragrance too real smooth transitions guys from your cardamom as well as your sage the thing that actually fades away first is your mint and then it's gonna be the sage and it's gonna be cardamom that transitions into this iris note guys and you know what guys I thought it was gonna be something feminine because it's like iris guys but you know what this is the type of iris that's in uh, was it Prada Lome uh, which is another gentlemanly scent that has iris. Uh, I'm not a, a master when it comes to like designer scents, but I know that there's a Prada Loam, I believe, that um, one of my coworkers let me try with this really masculine iris note. And it's pretty much the same thing with this iris picking up on the mid. And on top of that, the iris actually blends first with the opening notes, kind of like an undercover iris, a sweet and powdery iris that blends ends in with the opening notes so actually you won't feel that transition but then again past hour three on hour four five six is gonna be a full-blown well masculine type iris guys okay i mean that's the best way i could describe it the other thing that made me curious was the turkish rose which is part of this mid and you know i have tried some fragrances that have turkish rose front and center okay and it is a high quality rose if it's you know what it is and the thing is about this rose 
the rose is actually embedded. It's very embedded uh, under this iris. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot of iris, which is, you know, good because it's kind of like that Prada loam, like I said, or that's the feel of it. It's not actually like a rose note that pops out and, you know, that usually changes the dynamic of things. But no, this rose note is not that strong. It's embedded in the iris. You'll mostly get iris on this mid and it's going to be pretty strong. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be powdery. And the thing about this iris is that it actually, you know, really seamlessly transitions as well into the dry down notes. Again, you won't feel that transition and you might actually feel like this fragrance is kind of linear uh, because of that transition right there. But you know, the iris is gonna be there, like I said, with, I mean, a real itty bitty amount of rose and that lasts for another like couple hours. And the dry down as well is yet another seamless transition. So if you're a fan of evolutions, this might not be your fragrance, you know, just because, you know, evolutions, you can really, you know, smell or detect the changes, no matter what. Even if the fragrance notes are supposed to like gel together, you can really smell the dynamics change. This one right here is kind of a nice flowy fragrance. It just flows from stage to stage. You won't really notice it. It might feel in your right here in the dry down guys, you're going to get vanilla. You're going to get sandalwood. You're going to get musk and amber. Okay. Now right here on the dry down guys, the amber is the one that in my opinion is at a minimum and the ones that are stronger are your vanilla and your sandalwood as well as that musk, that trio right there. Vanilla and sandalwood, both sweet and creamy. These are the ones that pick up from that iris. So you can, you know, if you guys know your notes, you know how it makes sense. You've got powdery, sweet iris going into creamy, powdery vanilla with that sandalwood. It's a smooth, smooth transition. And then you have musk, which is, of course, you're kind of like your fade to black element right there that has something to do with the mysterious aura that, uh, you know, that they talked about right here on the card, right? That mysterious aura, musk does that as well. So you have this like fade to black, musk feel, musky, but then at the same time, sweet vanilla with some sandalwood. That is the dry down of this fragrance. Now this dry down right here is so seamless that I really, you know, couldn't detect when it actually came in. All I know is that this dry down lasts a very, very long time. And so I don't know if you've heard it from other people, but the performance of this is damn good, okay? In the sense that this fragrance starts off as an aura scent. It's an aura scent. It's not a huge projector, but you can feel the strength being consistent for how many hours so i remember it was already like hour 12 and it felt like it was like hour two in terms of the strength and people could actually smell this around me i mean i got compliments obviously so i mean all this stuff that they say in paper in terms of the performance you're definitely gonna get it here in this fragrance now let's talk about the feedback okay my no hype feedback on this fragrance. Now, first and foremost, this fragrance is a very usable perfume. Okay, it's a very usable perfume. So for those that are asking if, you know, this is full bottle worthy, I mean, there's a couple things, guys, okay? Fragcom buyers either buy perfumes for collectability, like full bottles, or they buy it because they anticipate that they're going to use it a lot. And this could be both because of all the controversy that's going on, the love and the hate, and the, the haters are saying that all these positive reviews are bots, you know, <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. You know, my point is, is that if you're buying it for collectability, that's one reason to get this because of all the controversy. And then at the same time, if you can foresee upon trying a sample, this is available on his website right here, if you can foresee that you're gonna use a gent scent um, for a lot of usages, for a lot of times that you're gonna be out, guys, then that's a great reason to buy this full bottle. Now, another question that you guys might have regarding this fragrance is, 
is this groundbreaking okay is this fragrance groundbreaking as some of these very hyped reviews say you know is it really like that um it really depends i think on your experience with fragrances okay um and it's really interesting because travis likes it I'm not so sure if he said groundbreaking because to me this is a usable perfume but it's not groundbreaking honestly because really these are notes that i kind of know are blended in uh other gentlemanly fragrances and they are like i said they're beautifully combined and they do the job in creating this mysterious alluring captivating aura around you that this fragrance can do but as for is this really groundbreaking my answer would be no what's really funny was that you know just last night as I was wearing this fragrance, uh, one of my coworkers actually came back and he had gone to an elevator that I had never gone in. And he said, he asked me if, you know, I was there, if I was in that elevator because the smell of the perfume in that elevator smelled very much like my perfume. And I knew that I didn't go in that elevator. So I was just like, ah, there you go. That just proves it. <laughs> I said, you just proved that because in my head, I feel like this fragrance smells like other perfumes actually or a combination of other perfumes and that basically proves it that you smelled something similar uh, in the elevator. Now to me, I don't know, this is just me guys, but this one smells and I know the notes aren't the same, but this smells, the feel of this is very much like Argos Danae, okay, Argos Danae. Uh, for some reason, the whole feel of this I feel, it feels like Danae. And I haven't really reviewed Danae ever. But yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, I was thinking of Argos Danae when I was actually smelling this fragrance right here. Very similar feels, very similar usages. Not really groundbreaking, but again, very, very usable. On to the next questions. Does this fragrance smell cheap or does it smell expensive? Let me answer that real quickly. In my opinion, guys, this fragrance does not smell cheap, but at the same time, it doesn't smell expensive either. I'm like right in the middle, which really leads me to say this, that I think that this fragrance right here is a grabber, upscale grabber, grabber slash upscale grabber. It is a gentlemanly scent that will get you the compliments. It's very usable day or night. And then at the same time, it's also upscale because I think that if you suit it up, and you went to an upscale venue, you could actually wear this. But as you guys know, I have tried a lot of really expensive perfumes, and does this fragrance like knock on that category? I don't think so. I don't think so, okay? I think it's like mid-level, I would say like 180-ish. I mean, if I could like gauge the price of this, I would say it would be okay at like 180-ish, but it does not smell cheap. It does not smell like a clone, but it does smell like another perfume or some other perfumes. Will this fragrance make me feel like a demigod? Will it fulfill what it says on the card, creating this mysterious captivating aura? Answer is yes though. That is the answer to that. Why? Because of the strong performance of this aura scent. That's precisely what it says on the card. It will create that strong aura around you and the notes are really centered around masculine, gent scent, like that kind of aura with a little bit of mysteriousness and mystique with the musk right there in the end, the cardamom, you know, as well as the iris. You know, there's that mysterious aura as well, but definitely your presence will be felt wearing this perfume, guys. Okay, again, very strong, very, very long lasting. So it does what it says on the card right there. Now, usage wise, guys, I really think you can wear this anytime, but I prefer to use this at night. I think that this will add some mystique, some alluring, captivating aura on you at night, whether you're gonna go on a date or you're gonna go casually with friends and maybe they have other friends that are, you know, might like you. This one right here is something that you can wear, no doubt. Again, usability factor, very high. Nighttime, any season. Um, I think summer, like really like hot summer is the one that I would say, uh, I don't know if I would wear this. Springtime, you can use this. But again, nighttime for me, guys. Again, upscale grabber to grabber. And ultimately, guys, again, at the end of the day, you must try it. 
Okay, you must try it because this is a gent scent. And in the department of gent scents, in my opinion, I think that it's a crowded house. Now, the thing is, guys, I do not have or I do not collect a lot of gent scents. I do have all sorts of perfumes, Middle Eastern. I got these, you know, real pop-like perfumes, the ones that really pop. And then at the same time, I have a little bit of gent scents right there, like Danger by Roja, for example. Now, this one right here, I'm gonna say this, guys, you gotta try it if you already have your set amount of gent scents. And you gotta compare this with the ones you own and see if this one stands out. So I think if you are um, a collector of gent scents, this might be, you know, 50-50 part of the bunch. But if you haven't collected much gent scents, if you have a very minimal amount, then this might be a nice like full-time grabber uh, type deal if you don't have a lot of those gent scents right there. And that is it, guys. This is my no hype review on Tamavici's Demigod 21. Thank you guys for being with me. Thanks to Luau for sending me this. I mean, like I said, I mean, I didn't want the bottles. I just wanted the scent and I wanted to just try it. Give him a shot. You know, he's just creating stuff. I mean, you know, creating things. It's just amazing, guys. You'll never know what comes out when you create something. So um, he just created this thing. And you know what, guys? Love or hate the numbers won't lie. If people love it, they'll buy it. You know, if they hate it, they won't buy it. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think. I mean, I'm pretty sure the comments are gonna blow up because, you know, that little cancel mob, these little goombas are probably gonna come over and say something. I don't care. I mean, again, I'm too busy for this. I'm too busy for the drama. I really don't care. Positive or negative, whatever you wanna comment below. It's whatever, guys, okay? I'm here for the scent. Um, if you loved it, let me know why you loved it. If it's kind of 50-50, let me know as well. Let me know if your findings really correlate to mine. You know, that's really what I care about, guys. I don't care about the drama. But let me know in the comments what you think. And again, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Again, the point of this channel and the reason why it's growing is because with every piece of hype, you know, the thing about hype is that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty about that hype. I take that uncertainty and I talk about the fragrances objectively, and that is why this channel is growing, guys. So again, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow on another video. God bless. Take care. Peace.